Hi, welcome to Write More Light. My name is Sarah with the Midwest Writing Center. And uh, today we're gonna try a slightly different format, very slightly. Um, we're gonna talk about the persona poem, or as I'm going to be calling it, the persona piece. Um, I, I don't love saying this is a, a strategy that can only be used in poetry or whatever. Um, so we're gonna be calling it the persona piece, but generally speaking, we we associate the persona with poetry. Um, I'll delve more into why, why that doesn't work for me in a moment. But um, traditionally what we do here is I give a little talk and then we um, get some updates on the Midwest Writing Center and then I do a five minute writing prompt. Today we're gonna write together. Um, and the reason is I know when I go to workshops and stuff, and uh and there's a free write particularly if it's like on a video um maybe i check out at the end or um maybe i don't stick to the task so um with this one in particular because i had such an easy exercise in mind um which i did not if this were a cooking show you know i would bring out my fully cooked food at the end I don't have a fully cooked food ready for you. I'm gonna be doing this with you. Um, then after that, we're gonna do the, um, the updates. So not super different, uh, but slightly. So thanks for joining me. Um, right, what is a persona piece? Um, like I said, usually we associate it with poetry. Um, we're gonna include prose. Um, I think definitely for our purposes, but maybe in general, it's best to keep to short form. Of course, novels exist. Um, and, and in some ways, really any much short, uh, not short, fiction, much, much fiction is persona, um, but that's like a whole can of worms. Um, Something that came to mind though was like Dexter, like the TV show Dexter started out as a, a series of books. So presumably not written by a serial killing psychopath, sociopath. Um, so, you know, in theory that that person is getting into the mind frame of someone very different from themselves. Um, other, I'm getting all out of sorts. My notes are just, too orderly for me and my brain is not. Um, yeah, so probably best to stick with short, short form though technically plenty of fiction, totally qualifies. Um, what I like to think, and if you were tuned in on Tuesday, you've heard me, you heard me say this. I like to think of the persona as an exercise in empathy. Um, I learned in doing my research that persona is a Latin word, well, Persona comes from the Latin word for mask, which I think is really interesting because um, in the context of personal writing, of course, we're wearing someone else's identity, which is what masks are. Um, and that's pretty cool. Um, other, other examples. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna look for, um, I can't totally remember the name of this novel. Um, but it's like a historical fiction. I don't even know how to look it up. Um, which of course I am, so. Okay, yeah, no, I, I was successful. Um, there was a, a marmoset <laughs> in, um, in, in England, that was a pet of, I think, Virginia Woolf. Um, I have not read this book. So anyway, um, there's this book called Myths, and it's, as I understand it, from the perspective of this marmoset who was a pet to, you know, great artists. Um, there's, you know, like Thomas Train, um, Corduroy, which is about, uh, which is a picture book, of course, but it's about uh, from the perspective of a teddy bear in a, in a store who, wants a home. Um, how oh, I read this, uh, I read this amazing short story collection called I Am the Executioner by Rajesh Parameswaran. 
Um, and there was a piece in there. I want to say it was the title piece, but I'm not totally sure. Um, but it was from the perspective of a tiger. Um, and it was really, really interesting. So just some examples of non-poetry. That is, um, that's persona. Okay, so uh, important things to keep in mind when you're writing persona. Um, grammar and setting, cultural sensitivity, height. Wait, okay, I got to slow down. <laughs> um, we're going to go over how to choose the perspective from what you're writing from, from what you're writing um, in a moment. But things to keep in mind are grammar and setting. So is the person or object, I'm going to primarily be working with uh, inanimate objects in this conversation today. Um, does it have a different background? If say it's someone more educated than you or less educated than you, they'll use different grammar, different um, colloquialisms, different language patterns altogether. So that's something you wanna keep in mind, but also related to that is, is geographical setting, um, time, all the things that make up setting. Um, you know, if they're from a different geographical setting, they're gonna have different ways of speaking. Um, ditto with time, of course. So when you're writing, you're writing first person. I want, I want to say personas are like always first person. Um, but when you're writing from this other perspective, you need to keep in mind, they're not going to talk like you. Just period. Um, now cultural sensitivity. This is, this is the big one. Um, this is the one where we get in trouble a lot. And again, if you were watching on Tuesday, I said, Generally speaking, if you would avoid that play or that movie or whatever, um, due to its lack of cultural sensitivity, probably don't write that character, uh, that persona. And what I mean by that is um, lots of times we see gender bent plays, right? We, we take the play and we just cast the, um, cast the characters the opposite gender of what was assumed in the original script. Um, so I would say, you know, putting on, putting on the, the persona of, of a different gender seems okay with me. Um, where it gets iffy is if that person is from a different race, say, you're not going to be watching a movie where everyone is in blackface. That's a bad move. Um, of course, there's a really famous po persona poem called Skinhead in which a black woman puts on the persona of a skinhead. Um, and it's a really, really beautiful poem, but it's something you really want to be careful about if, say, you're doing the opposite. Um, persona, like I said, is an exercise in empathy. So it's, in a lot of ways, an effort to really get to know, get inside of um, someone else's mask, uh, someone else's identity. And, and that's why you want to be careful to be sensitive. Um, I will say... You know, um, if you're not trying to share it, if you're just trying to do this as an exercise in empathy, probably doesn't matter what you do. Um, but if, but, but the trouble there is like, if you are proud of the piece, if you start to get really into it and then you wanna share it, um, I think it's safer to just not do anything you might regret or get in trouble for. Um, so other things that are included there other than um, racial identity would be um, maybe maybe some religions, um, maybe some gender identities. Again, it's really about tiptoeing a fine line, which is why I am um, specifically going to be picking up, picking up um, using inanimate objects for the examples that I use and for the exercises that I do. For one thing, I think they're fun. Um, for another, they're, they're safer. Um, and they can, be, they can be just as, you know, powerful. Uh, something I used to do once upon a time, I was, um, when I was in college, I often went to IHOP in the middle of the night. It was, uh, I couldn't sleep or whatever, or I needed to stay up late at night, whatever it was. I went to IHOP a lot in the middle of the night. And um, I would do 
personalities of IHOP. And I would just pick somebody sitting in my in my view and I would write from their perspective. That's a totally, totally fine exercise. Uh, none of those ever went anywhere, <laughs> but it's it's a good exercise just in being a human being even. Um, okay, so back to, back to the rest of the list of important notes. Um, the height, weight, and education of the thing you're personifying, um, the, whatever it is, uh, those things matter, right? So if you've decided to be a child, um, you're gonna be seeing things, literally seeing things from a different point of view, so you're shorter. Or if um, you've decided to do a paperweight, like that's a heavy object, it can't move itself, for example. Um, I already talked about education, but um, those are just things to, when you're, when you're sitting with this, when you're really trying to um, get an idea about the identity that you've picked up, um, those are things that that end up mattering, and perhaps more than more than we think. Um, you know, maybe maybe I want to write in the perspective of um, a ballerina, and I, in that case, I want to I want to really think about how it feels to be so mobile or um, life, right? Let's. I'm not, I'm very clumsy. I take up a lot of space. So this is something that I would wanna sit with. Um, grace, I guess, physical grace. <laughs> um, and then most importantly, sit with it, take notes. Uh, if I'm doing this hypothetical paperweight or ballerina, those are my opposites. <laughs> um, I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna think about it and I'm gonna take notes. I'm gonna say, okay, um, paperweights, I don't actually own a paperweight, uh, <laughs> but you know it's got a flat side. It's heavy. Um, it was made out of a geode. I don't know. That might be illegal. Maybe it's just a geode. Um, you think about its its origin story and um, what it might think of being handled the way you handle it. Um, an important thing. I think I'm going to bring this up later forgive me. Uh, an important thing to consider too is this isn't how you would feel if you were this object or person. This is fully being that person, uh, which is different, which is different. Um, it's, you have to, you know, start with, start with the origin and, and think about how that forms an identity. And it can be really hard. And sometimes the entire thing is, um, is the exercise. So um, now it's time for examples, which is good timing because we've got a special guest here right now. Um, I am going to screen share with you. We're gonna do one first that I have to prepare for just a wee bit. Sorry, everyone. My preparation is butts. Um, I don't have a audio file, and I thought I did for one of them. And one of them I have probably used before. It's it's a favorite. It's one that Ryan, um, the director at the Midwest Writing Center, introduced me to. So um, yeah, okay, cool. I'm ready for everything. Let's screen share. We're gonna start with a poem called Katrina, which is uh, which is about the hurricane Katrina. I'm gonna share sound. Okay. I'm gonna mute myself for this. Katrina, 
I was birthed restless and elsewhere, gut dragging and bulging with ball lightning, slush, broke through with branches, steel. I was bitch monikered, hipped. I hefted a whip rein, a swirling sheet of grit. Scraping toward the first of you, hungering for wood, walls, unturned skin. With shifting and frantic mouth, I loudly loved the slow bones of elders, fools, and willows. Um, so something, something about Katrina, I guess, if you weren't around for it or, or conscious for it, is um, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy to, to have this personification that is not inherently of an evil thing. Um, so this is, uh, I think, particularly for people who, who have some, some strong memories of this, this time, I think it was 2007, um, a, a really powerful sort of um, twist on what, what we expected, what we experienced at that time. Um, I'm realizing I wanted to, I want to make available the text side by side with the video that we're gonna watch. So I have to stop my screen share and start it again so you can see my whole screen. And I don't know, maybe that'll be pretty annoying. I, I apologize, but we're gonna do it. And we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> like it. <laughs> Okay, now back to screen sharing. Thanks for your patience, friends. Share screen. Okay, let's go. On February 7th, 1979, Pluto crossed over Neptune's path of orbit, making it the eighth planet from the sun for the next 20 years. Labeled as chaotic, Pluto was discredited from planetary status in 2006. This poem is called Pluto Shits on the Universe. Today, I broke your solar system. Oops, my bad. Your graph said I was supposed to make a nice little loop around the sun. Nah, I chaos like a motherfucker. Ain't nobody can chart me. All the other planets, they think I'm annoying. They think I'm an escaped moon running free. Fuck your moon. Fuck your solar system. Fuck your time, your year. Your year ain't shit but a day to me. I could spend your whole year turning the winds in my bed, thinking about rings and how Jupiter should just pussy on up and marry me by now. Your day, that's an ass wipe, a sniffle. Your whole day is barely the start of my sunset. My name means hell, bitch. I am hell, bitch. All the cold you have yet to feel chaos like a motherfucker and you tried to order me called me ninth somewhere in your mess of graph and math and compass you tried to make me follow rules rules fuck your rules neptune that bitch slow and i deserve all the sun i can get and all the blue gold sky i want around me it is february 7 1979 and my skin is more copper than any sky will ever be more metal neptune is bitch sobbing in my rear view and i got my running shoes on and all this sky that's all mine Fuck your order, fuck your time. I realign the cosmos. I chaos all the hell you have yet to feel. Now all your kids in the classrooms, they confused. All their maps wrong. They don't even know what the fuck to do. They gotta memorize new songs and shit. And the other planets, I fucked their orbits. I shook the sky, chaos like a motherfucker. It is February 7th, 1979, and the sky is blue gold, the freedom of possibility. Today, I broke your solar system. Oops, my bad. <laughs> Uh, so that's, you know, one of the best ever. <laughs> um, and that's also, you know, I use these two examples because you don't, you don't have to be a person. Um, I think a lot of the time we, we think about, you know, walking a, 
walking a mile in someone's shoes or whatever. Um, and it's always about understanding other people, but that can be limiting. Um, okay, so first, first part of your assignment. Um, let's make a list of personas. Um, I'm gonna give some examples. Hopefully you're gonna start writing stuff down. Um, could be a family member, a politician, a favorite piece of furniture, a discarded piece of furniture, a remembered piece of furniture, um, or, you know, stuffed animal, whatever it is. Um, a pet, uh, a ride, like a roller coaster, um, a, a food, lamps, a document, say a birth certificate, constitution, um, an assignment for a class, a profession, or a tool of a profession, say fake nails or a wrench or like a pen on a chain at a bank. Um, I'm gonna give some time because I, that's my list, I gave it. <laughs> um, and then the next thing you'll do, sorry, I'm, I'm going out of order and I apologize. Um, then the next thing we'll do is take notes on it, whichever thing it is that we choose. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna give actual time to do this exercise in a moment. Um, we wanna get inside that thing's head, try to move past the how would I feel and into the what would it be like from that, that thing's perspective. Um, we're gonna think about smells, sounds, things that, that might be overheard in that native environment, um, experiences, the actual environment, um, quotes it might hear, quotes it might say, quotes um, like if you've chosen a family member or if you've chosen a document, there are actual quotes you can use, right? Um, or a politician, historical figure, you can use for real quotes. Um, if it's inanimate, how, um, how would it talk based on based on what we know of its environment? Um, does it have an accent? Does it um, use lots of contractions? Does it have a high pitched voice? Um, for for another fun example, um, maybe this. Um, here we go. Here's the thing. This is a dinosaur salt shaker. And you can see it's made in China, but it currently lives in Iowa. Um, how would that inform its experience? Uh, how would that inform its, its perspective? Um, maybe it was put to work in, in Jersey, which I'm just saying, because I like Jersey accents. <laughs> Uh, it can, I think that's actually a really fun thing about using an inanimate object if it's not made in the US. I mean, even if it is, but like, what was that journey like, right? Where did the um, original ingredients come from to, to create the thing? If it's, I think this is ceramic. Um, I have no idea. I think it's ceramic. <laughs> then, you know, it's made of clay. Like um, if it's say, an item of clothing, you know, we know most cotton comes from the US, but then it's shipped to China um, to be turned into clothing. And then um, some final, final steps in the creating clothing process happen in another country, I wanna say Bangladesh. Um, so like your clothing is shipped all over the place to before it comes back to its place of origin. So that's a really fun one if you wanna work with the personal history of the object. Um, when you're getting to, to telling the story, um, my advice is usually going to be take the long route, sit with it, take notes, journal on it. It helps to really get to know the subject and it can be a lot more generative. If, you know, if you're just sitting down and you're just doing this as an exercise and you're like, okay, I'm going to write from the perspective of the pen that I'm currently holding. Um, cool, good exercise. Um, but it can be a lot more generative if you first sit with it, you first journal on it. 
Um, because then you've got more content, just period. The longer you spend on something, the more content you're gonna have. Um, with, with our examples that I gave, um, those, those both start out telling their story with, with a time frame. Katrina starts out with, I was birthed. And um, Pluto shits on the universe starts out with today. So that's, um, oh my goodness, did I close out of them? Um, I did. <laughs> um, there we go. So Katrina starts out with, I was birthed restless and elsewhere. Pluto shits on the universe starts with, today I broke your solar system. Um, so for, for this exercise, that's useful, right? Let's say we have a set time and that's where we're gonna start. Um, but something I, I wanna do, something that I, I, I want to impress upon my audience is, do you know the essence of the thing or is this just an exercise? Um, I guess that's not, that's a question, not something to impress upon you. Um, because you know that, I mean, your, your level of investment matters. Um, so, so we're gonna get into this exercise now. Um, some, some tips, lock the cats out better. <laughs> um, speak as the character in first person. Um, try and find a specific experience, uh, like an object getting use or getting discarded, um, a day in the life or an important event. You know, if you choose the constitution or um, a paper written by a 16 year old to turn into their social studies teacher. Um, Maybe it's the day that it's getting ratified or the day it's getting turned in. If you're doing um, a pen on a chain, it's maybe the day that it gets attached to the countertop. Um, but maybe it's the day it was birthed. Um, all right, let's get into this. I'm gonna put 90 seconds on my timer and we're all together going to that's not where my time is. Um, hi, baby. Thank you for helping. Maybe you will be my persona. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put 90 seconds on the timer and we're gonna make a list of potential personas to inhabit. So, um, <laughs> where's my notebook? I have acquired. I have acquired a notebook. So 90 seconds, let's go. Hope you were finding a notebook while I was. Don't waste your 90 seconds. Also, if you need more time, like whatever, take it, pause the video. Uh, something I just thought of because one of the objects I went with was, was fake nails. Um, was if it's a profession that you've chosen, say a plumber or a nail tech, and it's a profession you don't know anything about, that can be really cool, either for doing research or for not doing research. Um, sometimes it's fun to not do research and just guess. Okay, 
so that's 90 seconds. I used a lot of it <laughs> talking and or um, arranging my space. So um, I apologize if that interrupted you again. Feel free to pause, finish your list. Um, I want to, shoot, I might have to stand up and abandon you all. Um, I was hoping to do, I thought of an object that I, I think was really great. So um, pick one if, if you are ready to pick one. Uh, but I don't actually have it within reach. And I thought something useful would be if the object was something I could reach. Um, oh, I can. Okay. Not without making a mess. Um, so I think most people are probably familiar with the Funko bobblehead things. And I thought that would be a really cool thing to do. Um, I don't know a ton about the company. I think it's headquartered in Washington state, um, but I get these as gifts semi-often. This is Mystique from X-Men. Um, I don't need any. You wanna give me a gift, you give me books. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, I thought, I thought of it. And I was like, that's an object made of plastic that has movement. They don't all have movement, but um, some of them are bobbleheads. My cat finds this really amusing. Um, and I was betting, and I was correct, that it's not made in America. So that means um, that while maybe this object has the personality of the comic book character that it is um, portraying, um, it was also, you know, um, plastic is made from oil. And uh, it was made in Vietnam. Um, it, you know, was incepted sometime, incepted. Um, the company was, was created sometime in the last decade. Um, I'm guessing, again, this is part of the thing that can be really fun if you don't do any research um, and gained real serious popularity, right? You can't go into a store that doesn't sell Funkos. They're at um, Target FYE, um, that's a really short list. Barnes and Noble has them. I would guess the grocery stores have them. You know, um, hot topic. I have not been shopping in a very long time. Um, but also some of them are really expensive. Like there's probably someone out there who would be really offended to see me just swinging this poor toy's head around. Um, this one in particular has been a bathtub toy for um, my niece and nephew. You know, just your, just what knowledge you can glean from looking at the object can be enough. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I failed to mention in the beginning of this video that I have tried Persona, not super, to, to varying success um, in, in epistolary form, letters. Um, just because that's um, that's something that sort of ex excites my imagination. One time it started because my phone was stolen and I thought, and I had an event coming up and I had been taking notes on my phone and I thought, wouldn't it be so cute and silly if I read from my phone, this was before people did that. <laughs> I'm old. Um, wouldn't it be super cute and silly if I read a poem from my, or a letter uh, from my phone about stealing a phone. Um, so that's when I started doing that. And then I was kind of like, I could write from anyone's perspective, which you can, you totally can. Um, and it became, so the things that I knew about the person who stole my phone were, um, they downloaded a bunch of games, a bunch of apps. Um, and most of them were, were um, like cannabis themed. Um, and so that's it, that's all I knew. They took my phone out of, I, I think, my shopping cart at the grocery store and downloaded a bunch of apps about getting high. <laughs> um, and I was like, all right, well, this person's gonna write me a letter for some reason. So um, letters, are, letters are good. Um, that was not my best piece, but it was a fun experience in, in my first, exercise with persona and as 
a, a an event that event was was really silly people were like because i told i said like at the time it, people didn't read on phones um the the smartphone was not yet what it is now it existed but it was not yet what it is now um and so like i came out holding my phone and people were like is she serious and then it was the whole theme I'm not trying to brag about this. I'm just saying, like, when you do a persona, as with, say, um, Fatima Asghar, who did Pluto Shits on the Universe, making it a whole thing is fun. It's part of the fun. So, hope you chose your object. Hope I rambled long enough for you to feel comfortable with your choice of object. Um, so, the next step is getting my phone out from under my cat. Sorry, baby. Um, Man, he was being good while he was sitting on my phone. Um, so we're remembering, we're, um, we're speaking in first person. We have chosen our object and now we're, we're choosing the day. The day that this speaking, that this perspective is coming from. It's an important day. It's a day in the life. It's the day I was born. Um, yeah. You don't have to choose that yet. I didn't read my full instructions. So 90 seconds again. Um, we're gonna we're gonna journal. We're gonna we're gonna journal from the perspective of the thing that we've chosen. Um, again, that's gonna be in first person doesn't have to be on whatever day we end up choosing, but that is something to keep in mind. Um, like maybe we're journaling about what is important to, um, we're figuring out what's important, what may be, what may constitute as an important day in the life um, or an average day in the life. Um, an idea though, like I was getting to, is to use one of those, um, to use one of those examples, right? I was born, I was birthed today. Um, okay, nine seconds to journal. I'm doing my fun co mystique. This is the one who knows how to open doors. Um, okay, so I um, sort of accidentally got straight to work with that. Um, so that's kind of awesome, right? I, I was keeping in mind the, the origin story and, um, and I kind of liked where it was going. So if that happened for you too, of course, continue. Um, either pause the video or um, don't lose your spot in your writing and just keep going. Um, you can. You can totally ignore me from now on if you were in a good in a good zone. Um, having cat problems. I apologize, friends. Okay. Um, so 
<laughs> from from here, let's um, let's do another list if um, if if you need to. If not, continue your journal. I'm going to um, I'm going to make another list because I was really doing it out loud um, in in my example when I was just waving the toy around. Um, I'm going to put that list on paper. And that is a list of attributes or, um, you know, just attributes, <laughs> uh, features, personality traits, uh, physical features, whatever. Um, of, of the object or person that you've chosen, right? Are they heavy? Are they accented? Are they kind? Are they short? Are they tall? Whatever it is. Um, I'm gonna just do, should I do another 90 seconds? I'm just gonna do 60. I'm gonna do 60. Okay, let's start making a list. Um, the bobbling cat, blue skin. Um, the character, Mystique, are all relevant here, but um, she's also Vietnamese. She also lives in Iowa. She was made in 2014. Something I wrote down that I didn't expect to write down, it wasn't something I said aloud, um, was does she have friends? And so there are, like I said, a handful of um, Funko toys in this house, um, but very few from the X-Men universe. Um, what, do, what does that mean for her? Um, was, she, was she welcomed in? Was she the first toy I got? Um, she was not, Deadpool was. Um, who is from the X-Men universe, so that works. Um, but it also doesn't have to be reality. Anyway, pick the best attributes. And I don't mean that as a value judgment. Pick the ones that are most um, generative, the most exciting, um, maybe the most boring from the outside, but how can you, how can you play with that? Um, and then we're gonna start. What we're gonna start now is not journaling, but if you already started working on your piece, then we're gonna get back to it. Um, if you didn't already start on your piece, we're gonna start on your piece. You're gonna um, take that event word, right? Today, this morning, last night, I was born. Um, you, um, every day, okay? Um, we're gonna do 90 seconds with that in mind. And then <laughs> I apologize. Um, okay, 90 seconds. Let's get writing.
Okay. Um, wherever you are, wherever you are, stop. Um, I mean, don't stop if you're in a great place, keep going. Um, but wherever you are, the next step is to say, and then, or, but usually, or, um, previously. So we're going to take a totally different time from whatever it was that you were writing. And I'm going to share with you what I've created in this time. I think you can see me writing. Well, you can't see the pen, but you can see me putting my head down. Um, and I'll share with you what I've created. Um, but I started with a an origin. And now I'm going to switch into a and then, or but then, or usually, or previously. Um, for 90 seconds. Uh, previously would function like, here's what happened on this day. Previously, it had been like this. Um, usually would probably be the same unless you wanted to say, usually it happens this way. That doesn't really seem, gen seem generative to me, but do you? Mm -mm, another 90 seconds and go. Okay. Um, if you're going, if you're going somewhere, if you're on track, keep going. Um, I'm going to read mine to you and then I'm going to call it a day on this exercise. Um, I think that this, well, I'm going to keep going when I um, shut down this video. Um, I think this has been pretty, pretty generative for me personally. And um, like I said, I don't, I didn't have my, um, secretly finished food ready to pull out of the oven for the time elapse. Um, this is this is all done right here on the spot with you. I didn't even consider a Funko when I was working out the plans to, to do this, this talk. Um, so this is all, this is all fresh, um, which I guess I should also say, I can't promise it's impressive. Um, so let's let's hear it. Uh, they pulled my essence from deep underground, kept me hot and liquid, but with little clarity yet, no form, no future. Molded into shape identical to some 10,000 others, closely resembling some million more, I was wrapped, dipped, dyed, dried. Then, I was painted, named, given a number, thrown on a pallet, shipped slowly overseas. Mystique, they called me, shapeshifter, mind changer, identity plunging trickster. And the alarm went off. Um, so none of this, I've done no research. My, um, well, I, I like comics, um, but my knowledge of this character is relatively limited. Um, my knowledge of how toys are made is pretty limited. I figure plastic is made from molds. I figure most um, Funkos have, you know, a giant head and a little body. Um, they're all mostly standing in similar positions. Um, so this is all, this is all guesswork. Um, 
And I think that's cool. I hope that you're um, having a similarly generative experience. Um, I, I hope I continue working on that. That can be really fun. Um, and it was so low pressure too, because there's, there's nothing on the line here. This is, this is practice and practice makes perfect. Um, so, um, if you're going to take off, you're not interested in, um, any more of what I have to say. Now I'm going to give updates on the Midwest Writing Center, but I hope that this exercise, this little lesson, this write-in has helped you to write more light into your life. Now coming up at the Midwest Writing Center, we have a lot of great stuff. We are taking off taking off, we are um, launching, relaunching our bespoke poetry program. So if, so bespoke means like made to order, custom made. Um, so if you think that's gonna be the coolest gift of all time, or you want something commemorated or whatever, um, we are hiring out some really, 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 truly talented poets. And you fill out a quick Google form um, saying, you know, here's the occasion, here's what I want, here's who it's to, here's some background info. Um, as much or as little as you will, information you, as you want to give, um, starting rate is 20 bucks. We will, um, we'll write you that, that bespoke poem and, uh, send it out to you. If you want that for a Valentine's gift, very romantic, um, you're going to have to get that form sent in by February 8th. Um, but we're going to, we're going to do this in March. So you've got some time. We require, I want to say five days notice for, uh, before anything gets back to you. So um, if you've got a strict deadline, keep that in mind. Other upcoming events this month. Um, on the 9th, that's next Wednesday, we're starting a women and femme centered workshop with poet, activist, um, author, musician, speaker, Tanea Winder. Um, she's crazy talented. The workshop's called The Heartwork of Writing. It's a six week, once a week, workshop um that's supposed to be super generative we're gonna we're gonna dig into like where where our writing comes from like me personally where does my writing come from where does you personally your writing come from and um really mine that for 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 content and um you know share share a really powerful space that's also really generative in um two weeks three weeks um February 25th, that's Friday, at 5 p.m. The Iron Pen Writing Contest starts. Uh, that's a 24-hour writing contest uh, at 5 p.m. The prompt goes live on all our social medias, on our website, um, in your inbox if you register in advance. And then you get until 5 p.m. the next day to write and submit whatever it is that you've created. Um, this is a really, really cool, really generative um, contest that I have participated in many times. I am no longer eligible. Um, and the reason I really like it is because it, it does sort of force you into, into gear. It's $10 to register and every single person who registers is entered to win free tuition to the Collins Writers Conference. We've already um, gotten two, two faculty confirmed. It's already looking so dope. Um, of course, the conference is much more expensive than $10, um, but so, 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 um, so generative, such a great catalyst for for writing for community um it's excellent um so great reasons to register for the um iron pen writing contest we're going to have a reading anybody who participates can um can participate in the reading and award ceremony and um anyone who places is invited to publish in our um literary magazine our online journal uh, writer's block so lots of benefits. You can register anytime from now until uh, until the 26th. So um, you can choose as many or as few categories as you want, fiction, poetry, and nonfiction. Um, because you know, before you know the prompt, you don't, you don't know. You don't know what's gonna come. Um, you can change your mind too. It's a little trickier, but um, then in April. We have a flash fiction workshop. That's a one one time uh, Saturday afternoon workshop that um, teaches on on flash fiction. So it's super 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 short form, um, really packs a punch, and it's really hard to do. So it'll be a good workshop. Um, you know, I think that's all I've got for you for now. Of course, the first and third Saturday of every month from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Time, we have our workshop group. 
Um, that's, it's called Writer's Studio. Um, I am usually the host. We try to make it a really um, positive experience for everyone. We want to um, give you feedback based on your needs, not on our own taste, which is, um, which is important because we wanna help your piece become the piece you want it to be. Um, other things to look forward to for Write More Light, uh, we're gonna have uh, Philip Goldfarb Sturt on next week to talk about his work in academia and also um, some, his new book, I don't have near me because it's next to my bed, um, is on Shakespeare's politics, um, the politics of setting in Shakespeare and like what that means in context. So hopefully I'll have finished the book in time to ask him questions about it. Um, but if not, you know, I'll have him back. Uh, we also have Brian Kranz coming. He is a journalist out of Oakland, California, who um, lived in the Quad Cities for a long time. He's really, really talented. He's also a novelist. He's been on before. Um, but something that he's really talented at about with is um, the art of observation. So I'm going to um, ask him ask him how that works, how to hone that. Um, we're going to have Chewy Ranteria, who's um, author of a memoir that just came out that's absolutely slaying. Um, I read it, I loved it, and um, I'm really excited about that. On February 15th, same day Chewy's on, we have an event with Moline Public Library that'll be a reading and panel with, um, I, I cleaned my office and now I don't know where anything is, um, with some authors from these interesting times. Um, that's going to be pretty great. This is all virtual. Everything I've mentioned so far will be virtual. Um, the exception maybe of the conference that might be hybrid. More information on that later. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for you. Please, as always, write more light into your life.